Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to you to make your threat hunting program just a little better. Today, what we're going to talk about is threat hunting with PyShark. Um, and PyShark, for those not aware, is an open source wrapper. It's a Python wrapper to um, Wireshark's T-Shark uh, command line utility. So um, what we're going to learn is how to use open source libraries to automate network-based threat hunting. So diving right into it, like I said, PyShark is a Python wrapper for T-Shark. Um, it uses T-Shark's XML export features. And so if you're familiar with T-Shark, you'll also know on the command line there also is an elk output mode. Um, PyShark actually uses T-Shark's XML export capability. Um, what's nice with it too is it can be used with both live and captured data. And so if you want to write Python scripts to listen to traffic live, you can do it with PyShark, or if you have PCAP data, um, it also works with that. So it works mostly the same. There's some, so like uh, with Berkeley packet filters, there is a bug right now, or there was a bug in the past on using that with pre-captured data. Um, but for the most part, between captured or live data, um, it's very functionally equivalent between the two. Um, you know, we just talked about BPF and display filters, so it does support both providing capture and display filters. Um, this is important, right? Because if you're on a very loud network or you really want to limit what's captured or limit sometimes uh, usage of systems resources, you can set that Berkeley packet filter um, to where like Wireshark won't actually pull packets in. It'll exclude it before it even processes it. Um, or you can use native uh, display filters in Wireshark. And you know, display filters are often what you type into that Wireshark address bar at the top um, when you're forming your logic. So the same logic that you put kind of in that bar at the top of Wireshark when you're filtering is accessible in the Python library. Um, that's the link right there to the GitHub repo. Off of that too, there's also a great documentation page. So um, installing PyShark, it's pretty simple. It's in pip, so all you have to do is pip install PyShark or pip3 install PyShark if you have it there. Um, and T-Shark needs to already be installed on the machine. Um, when you actually use PyShark, you can give it the path to the specific T-Shark you want to use. Otherwise, it's just going to use the T-Shark that's um, in the environment variable, right? Um, that's how it knows where T-Shark is. Jumping right into getting started with live data. It's really this simple. So it's as simple as import PyShark. Um, you use the, in this case, we're going with live data. So we're doing PyShark.LiveCapture and give it the interface we want to listen on. Um, this is also where we can actually put those filters to. So if we want to put the BPF or the display filter or whatever else, um, you can put it in that live capture function there. Um, and then from there, you'll notice below, iterating through packets, um, you can just say for packet in capture, and in this case, sniff continuous, continuously the function. We're giving it packet count one, so it's only going to bring one packet back. Um, but in this case, if you went packet count five, you would actually process the first five packets through there. Um, so getting started with live data, this is kind of the bare MVP of you working through um, what it takes. So getting started with captured data, which we're going to talk more about captured data um, later in this talk, but it's getting started with captured data. Same deal, so you import PyShark, um, you know, you create the handle to that file, right? So pyshark.filecapture, give it the pcap. And from here, you notice we print capture zero. And on the left side of the screen, you'll actually see the packet output. Um, this is the first packet in that sample pcap in this case. So same deal, um, you're able to iterate through that uh, capture there will bring in every packet that's in the pcap. So you do need to watch your memory if the pcap, or if the, um, PCAP's too big, like you'll want to iterate over. Um, but yeah, I mean, getting started with capturing data, this is actually how simple it is. And then accessing field data, right? So we've loaded data in, whether it be live or whether it be from um, a previously captured packet capture. Um, when you're actually manipulating and dealing with packet layer, you actually have a layers list. So if you look off to the left here, this is one packet that we brought in. You'll notice about halfway down, you have that layers list. Inside the layers list, this is actually every um, packet field that Wireshark or that T-Shark identified out of here. And so 
if you had a bunch of layers, you actually could iterate through every layer here. Um, what's interesting, and we'll talk about some of the dangerous things here, is if you have a lot of the same type of protocol um, in the same packet just stacked on top of each other, you actually would see duplicate layers um, through this layer stack. So it's a good way of seeing pretty much every bit or byte inside the packet going down to where you want to. Um, you can also get to individual fields, and what we mean by that is if you look at the representation here, inside packet you have ETH, you have IP. Um, those two layers and their dictionaries here, um, they call them layers, they're actually dictionaries um, for that, but these, um, you can access each layer just like you can any Python dictionary. So if you wanted to get the source MAC addresses shown here, you would say packet because that's what we stored this packet in. In this case, it would be whatever your variable is. And then you could say dot eth dot source. Um, ideally, if there's an ethernet layer and there's a source IP, you'll get the ethernet source IP back. Same with eth dot desk, you'll get the destination MAC address back. Um, the thing to watch here is if there's not an ethernet layer for some reason, um, or if there's not actually that field, you could have an error thrown. So it's important when you're doing this, when you're writing code around this, to be mindful of how you're actually handling errors. So jumping into threat hunting with PyShark. So we talked about how you can load data and we talked about basic field usage, um, but let's hop in and look at a very concrete example of what we might do. So we pulled a PCAP in um, for us ICS Geek Lounge. This is about a 209 megabyte PCAP. There's about 2.27 million packets. Um, and if you want to get a copy of this, it's actually out on, Git, on GitHub um, or it's at the NetResec site with the link down here. But what we did is we loaded this PCAP in and the first arrow or the first box, if you look at the top left, you'll notice display filter HTTP. So we took the PCAP and we said, okay, let's set a display filter to where now when we do our four packet in this iterator, we're only going to have packets that um, we're seeing or that have HTTP traffic in them. Um, from those, we looked for that packet.http layer. Again, you have to be careful here um, because if there's multiple HTTP layers, you might actually only see one if you don't iterate through that layer list that we talked about earlier. And, but in this case, we went to the packet.http. This should be the top layer HTTP um, layer on this actual packet. And we pulled out the URI. And what we did then on the right is we actually counted the URIs. So if you look here on the screen, you'll notice nice ports trinity test.back. Um, and we saw that 88 times out of the um, 2.27 million packets. Um, this only took, this script actually only probably took less than a minute to run. So again, you can go through 2.7 million packets um, really quickly with Python. Um, it's faster with other languages. Python also, you know, while Python's quick to write, sometimes it's slower to execute than, you know, compiled or um, some other languages. But in this case, um, you know, we were able to say, okay, well, what's the frequency of URIs in here? In this case, like, we're going to see why this URL matters. Um, spoiler alert, what it is, we talked about it a while back. This URL, when you see this as a URL in an HTTP request, um, this is actually an indicator that in-map scans are going on. And so in this case, we saw kind of 88 times that this specific in-map service detection URL um, was used in the environment. So moving along, and uh, so that gives us the specific, or the specific URL that, that was used. Um, we could then actually pull the look for just that specific URL itself, and we could say, hey, what is the source, what's the source address that um, generated that URL request, and then what destinations um, did it send that request to, right? So the source is who was performing the scan, the destinations is who received the scan, um, and then if we wanted to, we could also see if it was successful or if it responded or what it responded with to see it was up. Um, but in this case, right, we took the indicator for that in-map scan and we went back through the PCAP and we said, okay, this source IP address, this 192.168.2.137, it scanned, okay, 88.49 and 30 and 100. Um, so with this too, right, you can take, again, a 2.27 million packet PCAP 
And then under a minute, know, okay, well, now I know exactly what the source and destination IPs were for, were for this scanning behavior. Um, this is a simplistic example. You could also use this for things like 17010 with some of the um, SMB backdoor um, used in like uh, Eternal Blue and some of the other um, kits that came out with 17010, the shadow brokers leaks and all that. Um, so even if you're digging in that case into a more sophisticated piece of nation state malware, um, the concept's the same once you know the protocol fields you're looking at. And what's nice here is with Python, if you need to manipulate any of those fields for the metrics or for your hunt, so if you have like base 64 you want to decode, or if you know, hey, the attacker is using this decryption scheme and we're actually able to get the key somehow, or we know what the key is, um, you can perform some of that behavior and some of that logic in Python and then, you know, feed either this results to a report to output like we did in JSON or to other scripts to look for behaviors. So you can build very sophisticated hunts um, using PyShark. Um, obviously, in this case, we just looked for a single indicator for the sake of uh, showing this, but you can do really cool things with this. So, um, yeah, so today what we showed is how to use PyShark to threat hunt. Um, it's a great tool. We use it a lot. And thanks for joining in this week. We hope to see you back next week.